Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I will say this. This is truly a day to be Prince George's proud. As we stand here at Hampton Park Mall, some of you all may recall that in 2019, right, the county executive was here. There was a bank approximately over there, and she took it down. That was the start of many projects that have occurred, and many along this Blue Line corridor. And so right now, we're excited to tell the historic story today of smart and critical growth that's driven by local investments and a number of hometown developers. So first, we'll hear from our county executive, followed by Brandon Bellamy, the Velocity Companies, that is this project here, Omar Kareem of Banneker Ventures, Anthony Wash of A. Wash & Associates, and then following, well, closing us out, will be Lloyd Blackwell of Harambe Development Group, LLC, and Jacqueline Alexander. County Exec. All right, good afternoon, everyone. This really is such a wonderful, wonderful day, again, in the history of Prince George's County. Um, an opportunity to talk about a project that you have heard much ado about. Uh, it is about the Blue Line Corridor. Uh, many of you have heard me talk about the amazing partnerships uh, that, have, that we were able to develop first with Governor Hogan. Uh, we're proud to continue that partnership with Governor Moore as well as our state officials. Uh, you've heard as well about the $400 million. All right, I think we're back up. Okay, thank you so much. We didn't want this to go out. This is too exciting for you all not to be able to hear uh, what we're talking about here. So you all heard us talk about the amazing partnerships uh, that we've developed first with Governor Hogan. We've been really proud to continue that partnership with Governor Moore. Uh, we are so proud as well of the amazing work that occurred with our state officials that resulted in $400 million and bonding authority that we're using to build a new library, a new amphitheater, and a youth sports complex. Now, y'all don't seem excited enough to me uh, about, about what we're discussing here. I don't know about you, but we have waited a very long time to see this kind of progress. And we're joined uh, today by so many uh, of the developers who are making uh, critical investments here, and I want to thank all of them. I want to thank also in their absence our state delegation uh, who were critical parts of this success are today in Annapolis continuing uh, to make sure that they bring home critical state funding. So I want to thank them. I know many of them are with us here in spirit, uh, as well as our county council members uh, who have been an active part uh, of this process. I want to thank them also. They believe, as I do, in smart growth for Prince George's County. Now, you know that the Blue Line Corridor, an underdeveloped five-mile stretch across our county, holds promise for the future. The promise of a sensible, transit-oriented development, access to new entertainment options, new amenities, and exciting new places to explore. The promise as well of a walkable, bikeable neighborhood community that connects our county with the rest of the region. In fact, one thing that I need all of you to, to look at is if you look around our Blue Line stations, and other metro stations around our county, you should note that many of them unfortunately look exactly the same now that they did 40 years ago when they were built. Prince George's County is perhaps the only place in our entire metro system where this is true. If you look at Silver Spring, they chose smart growth. Now Silver Spring is a destination rich with amenities, this mixed-use, transit-oriented development includes highly desirable restaurants, retail, services, and entertainment. The same is true for Boston, Rockville, and other successful metro station projects across the WMATA system. All of these projects have something in common. Local leaders worked with the communities they represent and brought a vision for transit-oriented development to life. Now these well thought out communities bring amenities and housing that people want. They grow the tax base, helping to shore up budgets and provide new services, and they attract residents from across the DMV with new exciting options for activities. In fact, our residents leave the county just to visit these places in Washington, D.C., Montgomery County, and Alexandria, where they can really, and, and what we are here really seeking to change today is we want them to enjoy those amenities here at home. Right. We're tired of going into D.C. We're tired of going to Alexandria. None of us want to go anymore to Bethesda. We want to have those amenities right here at home. 
We want our community to experience the same growth and prosperity that other residents around our county and region have experienced for decades. And so I hear people ask me, because we're all so eager to see this development, I've been hearing, well, why the blue line? And I wanted to answer part of that question today. The blue line happens to be the place where we have the most public land, which makes it ripe for private public partnerships, for development, and because the communities around the metro stations that we have mentioned have missed out on these investments for far too long. The people of central Prince George's County, like every other part of our county, deserve new amenities. They deserve economic growth and they deserve to see their quality of life rise with the rest of our community. It's our turn to bring the Blue Line Corridor up to its full potential. We can build these places to live. We can attract people to visit new places. We can give Prince Georgians the highly desirable communities that transit-oriented development offers. And we can do it with developers, and you'll love this part, from Prince George's County who call this home. I'm excited because today we're here to not only talk about the Blue Line Corridor, but I want to talk about the men and women who are working hard to bring this entire corridor to life. Before I do that, I want everyone uh, to take a look at, at this area all around us, Hampton Park Mall. And I want you to be reminded uh, that back in 2019, some of you may have even been here when this happened. I climbed into an old excavator, <laughs> right? You, were you here for that? It was fun. We helped take down the side of an old bank building that was right over there. We weren't just breaking down old walls that day. I, I want you to know that before this shopping center received, it, it received a failing grade at some point. It was a hotbed for human trafficking and violence. Much of the retail here failed to meet our residents' needs. This mall was a landmark from a bygone era of our community. Years ago, at the start of my first term and with the help of an outstanding team, I saw a vision for what the blue line could mean for Prince George's County. And we have worked so hard over the past four years to line up the pieces that we would need to turn that vision into prosperity for Prince George's County. So when I climbed into that excavator, we didn't just begin to demolish something old. You should know we began to build something new. Now we're here in the midst of a public-private partnership to transform Hampton Park. One of our county's own minority-owned development companies began to reimagine this shopping center with higher-end retail and apartments. We work with them on a vision for this mall that provides exactly what our residents want. A desirable community with new and exciting restaurants, new places to live with easy access to Metro, a new kind of development that reflects what Prince George's County has become, a prospering majority-minority community. This is one of many, many projects that are planned now along our Blue Line Corridor. And taken together with our public investment, investment from Amazon's Housing Equity Fund, our bonding authority and the availability of public land, we are making this corridor an even better place to live. And we're growing the local economy exponentially in ways that reduce, and I know that somebody ought to feel happy about that, that reduce the tax burden that our residents currently face, as well as provide the opportunity to increase the services we offer all Prince Georgians over the long term. Now, I saw a smile there <laughs> because I have to tell you that nothing makes our residents more angry. They pull me over in grocery stores and gas stations. <laughs> And they say, you know, we like you all right, but I do want to talk to you about this tax burden. It's a real thing that too often we have built on the backs of Prince Georgians, really, because, we, because of the residential property taxes that you pay. We, we, on the backs of Prince Georgians for too long, have paid for the services we need. But these investments will not contribute to sprawl. I want you to know that. We aren't investing in townhomes that have no schools, or roads to support them, and we aren't here to build another dozen royal farms. These blue line investments will bring grocery stores. They'll be well planned. They'll help to reduce traffic instead of increasing it, and they'll have plenty of new special amenities that we're building with our bonding authority. Right. I've heard people say that our county is overdeveloped. 
but nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, the fact is Prince George's County has the most undeveloped land in the state of Maryland. On top of that, we commissioned a study that showed an enormous amount of unused public land along the Blue Line. This gives us a rare opportunity to plan and prioritize smart growth that meets our residents' needs. Our public land is ready for public-private partnerships and it's a resource that's especially available along the Blue Line. Taking advantage of this unique situation will transform communities inside the Beltway. And we're doing it with local businesses and developers who call Prince George's County home and want to see us thrive. These are people who care about this county. We're moving forward for all Prince Georgians, making sure that no one who calls our home is priced out. We're investing in affordable housing programs that promote equity in housing. We're studying rent to help make sure that we can keep homes affordable for everyone. By working with local developers, we also make sure that the wealth that we create with these investments help to close the wealth gap. We want to build generational opportunity for residents who bet on Prince George's. All right. And we're not talking about one or two projects within these five miles along the Blue Line Corridor, and I want y'all to write this down. We have $769 million in private investment by black developers. That's three quarters of a billion dollars along the Blue Line, not including the 400 million anchor facilities. Banneker Ventures, led by our very own President Omar Kareem. Thank you, Omar Kareem, who, by the way, lives in Prince George's County with his family, is building 800 residential units in the pavilion at Lotsford, and another 193 units with tens of thousands of feet of retail and community space and Park Place at Addison. Thank you so much, Omar Kareem. The Velocity Companies, led by the super bad CEO, Brandon Bellamy. Right. Thank you, Mr. Bellamy, who is, by the way, also what? Prince George is proud. He's from Prince George's County, and he lives here now. Is building 400 residential units, a hotel, 125,000 feet of office space, and another 100,000 feet of retail right here at Hampton Park Mall. All right. All right. And I want to say, like so many of these developers, and they each have a similar story, they refused to give up on Prince George's County. This particular project, Brandon wouldn't hear no. It took how many years, Brandon? Is it nine years or ten years? A decade. A decade. Uh, and he stuck in it with us, and we want to thank him. A. Wash and Associates, led as well by Tony Wash. Thank you, Tony right. Wash who is building 173 residential units and 210 on the park. We're so excited as well. And the community built builders with Vice President Jackie Alexander. <laughs> woo woo! Come on, Jackie. In partnership with Lloyd Blackwell of Harambe All right. Development Group, who has roots in our county and lives here now, are building 112 residential units with 4,300 square feet of retail at the Epiphany at 6500 Central. Thank you. <laughs> Truly, that's what this is all about. We're building prosperity along the blue line, and we're doing, with part, doing it with partners who are personally invested in our success. Our partners in private industry call Prince George's County home. They aren't just committing themselves to lucrative deals or high profits. They're committing their time and energy to making these communities along the Blue Line Corridor prosper. I challenge you to find anywhere else in the country where local minority developers are leading investment on this scale. This kind of investment right here along the Blue Line Corridor in Prince George's County is historic. And other jurisdictions across the country should be looking to this as a model of successful and smart growth. I'm proud to be here today with Mr. Bellamy, Mr. Kareem, Mr. Wash, Mr. Blackwell, and Ms. Alexander. These real estate professionals are part of the future here along the blue line. And let me say this, real estate projects have to make sense on paper. 
before they can make new space for homes and businesses. Any large-scale project takes a mountain of work, of studies, of analysis, and of meetings. These leaders here with me today have worked with our community for years to bring three quarters of a billion dollars to life along the Blue Line Corridor. So I want to thank them for believing in this vision for the Blue Line and for all of the hard work that has brought us to this exciting time. Imagine for a moment believing in something so much that you work for it and work towards it for years. This is a goal based on conviction. These men and women have conviction in our county and we are so lucky to have them as our partners. Nowhere else in the nation has the kind of investment by local developers that we do. And Prince Georgians, we're making history here today along the Blue Line. I am fully committed to the future of these communities in every community in Prince George's County. And I know that we have the kind of development here that people flock to from across the region. We've spent time in Rockville. We've spent time in Silver Spring. We've been to communities in Boston and Clarendon, and they're fun to explore with more restaurants and stores together in one livable place. But Prince Georgians is our time to build our very own. So thank you so much for being here. And I'll hand the program now over to Brandon Bellamy from Velocity Ventures. Would you help me welcome him? All right. They told me I couldn't wear my sunglasses, so I took them off. That's a private joke, but thank you, County Executive Officer Brooks. Uh, good afternoon. On behalf of the entire Velocity team, welcome to Hampton Park. The last time we hosted stakeholders and members of the media on this property was for our groundbreaking in 2019. In just three and a half short years, we made significant progress on phase one. And even in the midst of a global pandemic, rising construction costs, and rising interest rates, this 25 acre, $250 million redevelopment project still thrives. This project includes, thank you, thank you. This project includes 201 units of market rate multifamily housing, over 60,000 square feet of retail, including the award winning Ivy City Smokehouse, the minority owned grocer Market Fresh Gourmet, right. this beautiful 120,000 square foot building, which will be the new home of Prince George's County's Health and Human Services Agency. Hampton Park has been a true public-private partnership with Prince George's County. Without the investment of TIF bonds under the leadership of County Executive Also Brooks and the support from the county, this project would not be made possible. I would be remiss, though, if I did not mention that the true originators of this project were the members of the sanctuary at Kingdom Square under the leadership of Bishop Anthony Macklin. <laughs> Phase two of this project just over there will bring another 250 units of multifamily housing, a 100-room hotel, an additional 20,000 square feet of retail and amenities. This project has created and will create more than 1,500 jobs. Wow. At Velocity Companies, we are motivated to take on projects that will have real impact on the communities they serve. We pursue projects in underinvested areas, not only in the Washington, D.C. region, but across the country. We reach communities that are often overlooked in a profound way and bring significant economic opportunities and investments to those communities through commercial development, capital investment, and fund management. In addition to Hampton Park, some of our other current projects include the shops at Livingston Square, Penn Place Apartments, Andrews Park Town Center, and the Fuse Sports and Entertainment District in North Carolina. I've been experiencing some full circle moments lately. Standing here today to celebrate the progress of the Blue Line Corridor is definitely a full circle moment for me. Over a decade ago, I was working with the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission to designate the Central Avenue Blue Line Corridor as a sustainable community. As many of you may know, we pursued this Hampton Park project for more than a decade. And during that long period of time, what kept pushing me forward through all the ups and downs is the impact that I knew this project could have for our community inside the Beltway along this corridor for a community that is often overlooked
but has immense potential. For me, developing Hampton Park is about doing our part, eliminating food deserts with an anchor grocer like Market Fresh Gourmet. It's about bringing sought after retail, high quality restaurant options, vibrant amenities, and experiences to where we actually live. It's about creating jobs and opportunities as most of our retailers are county-based small businesses. I know and understand the needs of our county firsthand, especially the communities inside the Beltway. I grew up in Prince George's County. I'm a proud graduate of Central High School, which is just up the street right there. Go Falcons! I'm a Prince George's County resident. I am also a Prince George's County business owner. For me, projects like Hampton Park are about bringing and creating opportunities that we all deserve regardless of race, background, or status. It is about breaking through the unconscious biases that people have about our communities, especially the communities inside the Beltway. Unconscious biases that I experience every day as a commercial developer who happens to be black and as an African American man in today's society. It's about representation, giving hope, creating opportunities, and inspiring the communities we serve. It's about breaking the barriers for other minority developers, barriers such as access to capital and unconscious biases. Development and fund management are industries that are not always favorable to minority communities. I deeply understand the challenges of being a minority developer and fund manager firsthand. I live it every day. Standing here today amongst other African American developers who are committed to uplifting underserved communities makes me extremely proud and gives me a greater sense of hope. Projects like Hampton Park is about leveling the playing field. It's about closing the equity and equality gaps in our communities. My dad used to always say a rising tide lifts all boats. It takes all of us, the county, investors, developers, stakeholders, business owners, residents, all of us to lift our communities. We have to do it together. We all must do our part in ensuring that developers and projects like the ones here today are supported because these projects and the developers who create and build them contribute to the health and vitality of local economies, local communities, and local residents. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I want to bring my brother Omar Kareem from Banneker Ventures to the podium. Thank you, Brandon. Um, and thank you, County Executive Angela Also Brooks and, and your amazing team. Um, we're pleased to be here this afternoon with each one of you all for this historic uh, announcement. Um, we're pleased to have the executive's incredible economic development and housing teams and three amazing black development teams who are bringing much needed economic development to the Blue Line Corridor. Banneker is pleased to announce Park Place at Addison Road Metro, which will be adjacent to the Addison Road Metro station right down the street, the second stop along the Blue Line Corridor in Prince George's County. We are investing, along with our partners, $85 million to develop this mixed-use apartment and retail community that will include 193 affordable apartments and 11,000 square feet of retail space. Um, anchored by a Bank of America branch, which will bring much needed banking and saving opportunities to residents of the Capitol Heights community. When we break ground this fall, Park Place will create more than 350 construction jobs and 35 permanent jobs. And we are excited to announce that more than 35% of the jobs and contract dollars will be awarded to local county MBE firms. Our finance partners at Park Place include a range of institutional organizations, including a $20 million, $20 million, that's a big number, for at least for a, a poor kid from Memphis, right? A $20 million investment from Amazon's Housing Equity Fund. I want to personally thank Catherine Buell, who's here with us today, who's head of the fund, and their amazing team, Syntho and the other partners from Amazon, um, for their trust in us and for investing these funds in this transformative TOD project along the Blue Line Corridor in Prince George's County. 
I also want to thank County Executive Angela Also Brooks and her wonderful economic development team and housing teams led by Angie Rogers, Denise Robinson, and Aspasia for their Aspasia Zypolia for supporting this project. I also want to thank Lisa Allen, who's uh, been running Park Place at Addison Road for the last couple of years and who will be responsible for delivering the project on time and under budget. <laughs> thank you, Lisa. And then finally, I'm pleased to announce the investment of over $320 million at the end of the Blue Line Corridor to develop what we consider downtown Largo. This project, which we are calling the Pavilion at Lotsford, is located on one of the largest undeveloped parcels in downtown Largo along Lotsford Road. The Pavilion will include 800 apartments, 60,000 square feet of neighborhood serving retail space, a one acre park, walking path, and parking. The pavilion is nestled in between the new $650 million new regional hospital and the Wayne K. Curry administration building and will finally bring density and placemaking to the end of the Blue Line Corridor. We want to thank the entire county administration staff and the Washington Metropolitan Area Trans Transit Authority for being wonderful partners on this trans on this historic development. We also want to thank Carrie Cowan, our development director and partner who is bringing this transformative project to the county. Thank you, Carrie. And finally, I want to send a shout out to the other members of our development team, Amina Capers, who are development, who's our deputy general counsel, and Iman Smallwood, the newest member of our development team for the amazing job that they've done. Now I would like to bring up my brother, uh, Anthony Wash, who will talk about 210 on the park. Thank you. So I, th I, I thought I was going to be wise and take advantage of technology and, and follow my son's advice and put everything on your pad and didn't realize I can't see the daggone pad outside. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I should have followed suit and, and gone old school. Um, I'm a talk about our project a little bit. I want to first give acknowledgement uh, to, uh, and today is historic for many reasons. I, I want to thank and give acknowledgement to Prince George's County Executive Angela Also Brooks, who also happens to be the first black woman county executive. Uh, I want to also give acknowledgement to the first black governor of the state of Maryland, Wes Moore. Uh, and I want to thank so many agencies that were a part of 210 Merlin Park being where it was today. I definitely want to thank Angie Rogers out of the executive office who's been a catalyst in helping us move through some challenging times. I also want to thank those at DHCD and DPI and all those individuals who are working tirelessly at Mega Suites uh, to make this project. Uh, development is hard, uh, but when you have agencies that are committed to the same goals, it makes it a lot more much easier. Okay. I really want to thank uh, Amazon, Catherine Bill and Synthel. I, I want to thank them because our project is a little different. 210 Merlin Park, uh, when we responded to the RFP and we went to the community, the community said they wanted market rate. To TOD, it made sense. Uh, we got held up for about a year uh, because we had a difference. Uh, we had to bring the council person on board that's to make them understand why it's important to have a TOD in a, or multifamily in a TOD. Uh, we got through that hurdle, it took about a year, got through that hurdle, uh, and then we ran into COVID, which crushed us for a few years. Uh, and without Amazon stepping up, uh, I would have been a developer down and out uh, because this was a market rate product and I didn't have the instruments of LIHTC to kind of support us. Uh, now we are all in, uh, and when I say development is hard work, it's really hard work because you have to leave blood, sweat, and tears in these projects, especially in the environment today. Uh, so those who you, of you all who don't understand development, bigger developers can sit out in times like this. They can back away from deals because they have long resources. Small developers, and I'm honored to be here with my peers, who are African-American and who happen to be developers, 
We can't do that. We don't have the luxury of doing that. So we need the support of county agencies. We need the support of the Amazons of the world to see the plight uh, because they understand that uh, there was a 400 year head start for developers as far as we were concerned. Uh, and we're bringing up, not the rear, but we're bringing high quality, sustainable projects to communities that represent us. Uh, so I want to thank everybody who was involved in uh, making this project uh, a reality. I want to thank the leadership again from the county executive. Um, a little bit about me, I'm a young man who uh, my first home was Burry Farms. So I grew up in the projects, public school education, didn't finish college because I needed to drop out to raise my daughter. Uh, I've run an electrical contracting company for 27 years. I've been a developer for 15 years. And I say all that because on this last day of Black History Month, I'm really standing on the shoulders of all those who have come before me. Uh, my grandfather, my grandfather, God rest his soul, who died in 21, and I got this, he, he was a Prince George's County resident. He lived in Woodmore for almost 20 years. I was responsible for him, and I, I was in Prince George's County back and forth every single day for the last 20 years. Um, my grandfather had to go to work every day and be called the N-word, but then come home and raise boys to be men. Uh, that was a daunting challenge. Uh, but it's those shoulders that we stand on on today, an historic day, uh, that we shall all be proud of. So I'm going to close out. Uh, we said uh, less is more, and I want to pass it over to Jacqueline. Everyone I know I'm standing between you and lunch, so I'm going to be very brief. I'm a resident of the county. I was born and raised here in, in Prince George's County. I started out and relocated from Washington, D.C. with my parents uh, back in 1963. And I was educated in the Prince George's County Public Schools. I went to Thomas G. Pullen. I went for one semester to uh, Central High until they bust us to Bowie High School. And then I graduated from Bowie State University. So I have a lot of history in Prince George's County. My father used to be the mayor of Seat Pleasant, Maryland. He started out with Model Cities. You know, he was one of the original OGs in politics. I currently reside in the Rolling Ridge community. That's the community that's right uh, buttresses uh, uh, where the Banneker Project is. And uh, I've been a homeowner there for 30 years, and I've raised my family in that area. But I had a passion. And my passion was to bring our area to the glory of what it is. I know the blood, sweat, and tears that my father, Mayor Arrington, and others put into getting things in, inside the Beltway. One of the things that my father did was got money through HUD to build the Safeway, if y'all remember that, down on Addison Center. And he wanted the best for the community. What really got me started in my journey. I was in business and in government for 30 years. When they turned that Safeway into a dollar store and a beauty shop. And I said to myself, I can't let it go out like that. So I jumped in and I said, we're going to do something because I have experience in federal procurement. I have a lot of uh, friends who are entrepreneurs. And I called on them to list help for our county. And what we did, I wanted to be a catalyst for inclusive real estate development. I own some property in 1 Central Avenue right in front of the metro. And I wanted to make sure that in the development, as we, me and Mr. Bellamy talked about on many occasions, that we all had a seat at the table. That's why I named my corporation Harambe, which means in Swahili, pulling together. And I want to pull together with the community. And I'm happy to, re uh, happy to report that my tenants that are in my, currently in my building, they're working class people. They won't be caught up in the vortex of, of gentrification. They're, they're going to have a seat at the table, and I'm insistent on that. So when we had developers that came in that wanted to, to just do market rate, I said, not here. Now, the project is an, a, truly an affordable housing project under the HUD program. It's a, for working-class residents to provide walkable access to Addison Road Metro. And I'm proud to say that we're the first inner beltway federally funded workforce housing project in the region. Thank you.
Now, Harambe Development is blessed to be partnered with a group called the Community Builders. And they are a nonprofit real estate developer that insists on in making visions of community inclusive into reality. So I would like to uh, introduce Jacqueline Alexander, the Vice President of Real Estate for the Community Builders, so she can say a few words. Thank you, Lloyd. Good afternoon, everyone. So the Community Builders, we're a national nonprofit developer, property manager, resident services organization where we are committed to building communities where people can thrive and sustain themselves. And so we're honored to be here today with County Executive Alsobrook and these amazing developers who are committed to reinvesting in strong communities along the Central Avenue and Blue Line Corridor. As Lloyd mentioned, we are partnered on this Epiphany project, and for us, organizations, um, for us, we partner with organizations that have um, the diversity of collaborations, but we're honored that we can be aligned within our mission. When we first met with Lloyd and understood his vision for the Epiphany Project, which would create uh, workforce, fam uh, workforce homes uh, for families across the street from the Addison Road Metro Station, we were excited because this is an opportunity to connect people not only to affordable housing, but to jobs and other activities that keep them in this region. So, uh, County Executive, why should we folks have to go out to, uh, to Alexandria and up to Howard County and to other parts? We can stay here. We can bring the amenities to these communities. And we're, uh, we're excited to be a part of this collaboration. Uh, and we're a part uh, to support the commitment that is, is been put forward uh, for everyone. So we're, we're, we're excited that we're leveraging public and private and nonprofit partnerships, that we're bringing the needed investment and attention on what appears to be a forgotten corridor with such a rich history, but that TCB is committed to contribute its time, its resources to the transformation to Prince George's County. It is because we see the vision, we believe in the vision, that we have a promise of change that we want to be a part of. So we just thank you for the opportunity to be here with you, Lloyd, to celebrate and to really look at the uh, uh, 6500 Central Avenue Epiphany Apartments, which will be over 100 units of, of affordable housing that will be in the Seat Pleasant community, over $50 million worth of investment that we're going to uh, leverage private partnership dollars for this project. It's going to be an exciting opportunity and we're glad to be a partner and to have a seat at the table with you. Thank you. She's really amazing. Now, as, he, as, as uh, Jacqueline mentioned, the name of my project is Epiphany. Now, Mr. Uh, the Banneker project is on the other side, Addison Road South. Mine is on the, the Seat Pleasant side of Addison Road. So just imagine when you're coming off the metro, you're going to see this seven-story apartment, and the name's going to be Epiphany. And that was my vision. I wanted to see <laughs> something different in that area, an area that hasn't been developed since 1959. Wow. Now, my block, when uh, the, the last development that was done on my block was Eisenhower when he was there, and I think the, the, the AM radio was prevalent, and the drifters were on the radio. And also, I don't know, a lot of old school people know this, but Central Avenue was a two-lane highway at the time. So we, right now, we know that that block can has reached its full potential, and we're looking inside the Beltway to bring it back to where it was. So in conclusion, well, I just want to mention this too, and this is very important. When I first pitched this project, it was, um, I met this person that was running for office, and I pitched a project to her years ago, seven years, and she said, you can do it. And she was the biggest advocate for that project, and here she is now. All right. I want to thank you for this. Thank you for your vision. Thank you for bringing this uh, uh, area back and getting investment in it, and you're the chief executive like no other. All right. Definitely. So in conclusion, friends. Don't underestimate inside the Beltway. We had a rich legacy. If anyone knows the history of Fairmont Heights High School, know the fact that Gogo uh, -Go wasn't invented in D.C. It's invented in C. Plus. Isn't that right, <laughs> Stephen Coleman? And others. And, and it was, we just had so much legacy and history within this area. And we all want to be major stakeholders with the county. So under the leadership of An Angela Also Brooks, the best is yet to come.
You know, there's one partner who is um, not present today, and I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the contribution he made. Uh, Brandon mentioned him, Bishop Macklin, and the Sanctuary Kingdom Square. Um, and it, it reminds me of a quick story I wanted to share with you and to really acknowledge and thank the church. They got this project going. Uh, when I was a prosecutor, uh, Bishop Macklin came to my office and said, I have a vision. And at the time, I have to be honest with you, I couldn't see what he was talking about. The church was right here in this shopping center. And he said, you know what, we're going to develop this. And we're going to bring beautiful amenities here. And, and we just want to get this project going. But there was a problem, and it was that the hotel across the street there uh, happened to become a hotbed for human trafficking and other things, and that the community around here was crime-ridden. So he came to me as a prosecutor and said, if, if you can work with me um, to, to start cleaning up some of the crime in this area, then we can make this project into something beautiful. So what we did was we together hosted um, a meeting, came together with the owners of the hotel, invited them to sit down and speak with us and told them what we saw for this community. Bishop Macklin and the members of the Sanctuary Kingdom Square literally went door to door in the hotel across the street and instead of condemning the individuals who were involved in prostitution and human trafficking said, can we help you? Is there something that our church can offer to you um, so that we can help you improve your life? Bishop Macklin ended up hiring a number of the individuals who were living in that hotel um, so that they could have the resources to have better housing. We also work with the hotel owners to provide training so that they would know what human trafficking looked like and the signs of it before they admitted these people into their hotels uh, and also began to pass some legislation uh, that, for example, prohibited renting rooms for hours and, and that kind of thing. Long story short, we were able to be successful because of Bishop Macklin's leadership. We cleaned up this corridor, we cleaned up the human trafficking, and voila, today, thanks to Brandon Bellamy, um, this is a, a vision that is, at first I couldn't see. So I do want to thank Bishop Macklin uh, in his absence and, uh, and to explain that this project has been a long time coming. So anyway, I know we have some questions we're probably going to take. Um, and so I, I think all that's so fitting, and, and just so you know, we intentionally selected this location with the new Health and Human Services building here. And then, as you can see, the, the old mall that'll soon be coming down that's over there. And so I, I think here Prince George should be excited. This is absolutely the future of this Blue Line corridor and the people who have for a long time gone uh, without. Uh, what I will say very briefly, and then we'll take if there are any questions from members of the media, as you can see, we have renderings for all of these projects as well as the vision overall. It's part of the Blue Line Corridor, uh, Addison, Rosey, Pleasant, Capitol Heights. Um, and then also, if anybody is interested, I know a number of our stations covered this in 2019, but we also will provide you with B-roll uh, of the groundbreaking that happened in 2019. Are there any questions that we can answer, or you can certainly get some afterward? So we're going to have DCAO Rogers come up. Or I should say Deputy Chief Administrative Officer for Economic Development, Angie Rogers. So the question was, how long will it take for all these projects to start coming online? This one obviously is so. Uh, so here we go. You got it. All right. So projects are all on uh, different timelines. Obviously, the project here um, at Hampton Park uh, has already started. So you guys are moving into your second phase, correct? Um, so that's already started. Some of the uh, other projects um, that you see, you'll start to see uh, go into construction over the next, you know, 12 to 18 months. Same thing for our Blue Line Corridor facility. So we've got about an 18-month lead time uh, on those Maryland Stadium Authority supported facilities, our partnerships on amphitheater, food hall, um, those kinds of projects. We've got an 18-month timeline uh, before we can start construction on any of those. Repeat. Oh, oh, okay. The revenue. She said revenue return. I guess what would be the estimated revenue? So, um, for the, uh, the, you mean for the residential developments for this project, I would ask um, 
you want to speak to Hampton Park and then we can uh, talk about some of the others here. The revenue return. So, taxes. This is a this is a pretty large project, and so um, we're bringing a, a huge amount of tax base to uh, inside the Beltway to, to, to Central Prince George's County. These are large numbers. Um, you know, it's hard to put an exact number to it in the way that you're asking the question, but you've got you know millions of dollars of taxes coming in off of these projects over the life cycle of the project, and we can see that from this project as well as additional projects that is going to stimulate and catalyze additional development and it creates a gravity that brings more investment so it's not just what happens here and the market rate returns and taxes that get generated it's the fact that it catalyzes additional development opportunity and attracts capital into these communities that are underserved so i think it does a great job doing that and it hits all the market returns And for, uh, for Park Place at Addison Road Metro and the Pavilion, I think we're estimating about a little north of $2 million a year in annual real property taxes and sales taxes for those two projects. Uh, so uh, the, Car the Carillon development uh, is also about to enter its phase two. Uh, so uh, they started on uh, phase one, which was a medical office building uh, right across the street from the new hospital about 18 months ago. Uh, they're going to be finished with that this year. Uh, their next uh, phase will be a multifamily building and also the first retail uh, or traditional retail to go into that project. Uh, and so Carillon is uh, underway as well. Um, so, uh, community input has happened on each of these projects, um, and because of the different processes that they go through uh, to get along in their development uh, pipeline, uh, community uh, engagement has happened on each of these projects. In terms of our blue line, um, and we just started uh, in the past couple of weeks a refresh uh, on that community uh, engagement. We actually have another community meeting tomorrow night um, about uh, the Blue Line Corridor uh, vision and how it fits in our economic development plans. Uh, we have been doing also a number of smaller uh, sort of stakeholder engagement meetings uh, with uh, community leaders and that's been going on uh, since last fall. Um, the big thing that I will say is this. Uh, the Blue Line Corridor vision materialized because there was about 15 years of community planning along this corridor. I know they said the wind started up. <laughs> we better wrap it up. There was about 15 years of uh, community planning along this corridor. So when we uh, sort of launched into this Blue Line Corridor vision as it looks today, it is based on those 15 years of planning. So we knew what the community wanted. They've been telling us for decades uh, what they wanted. Uh, and so we based that vision uh, on all of those plans that have been going on for the past 15 years. And now we're going out, uh, since last fall, we've been going out and doing a refresh of that community engagement to say, here's what we've come up with. Um, and here's what we now have real resources for you to see. So this isn't planning in a vacuum. Uh, these aren't things that we don't have resources for. Uh, now we can talk about what can actually happen. I just wanted to follow up on one of the questions, uh, uh, piggyback on what Brandon said in terms of the economic development that we will stir. We are uh, budgeting at about a half a million dollars annually. Uh, back into the conference and also our project is workforce development uh, and we're slated to break ground third quarter of this year. So I just wanted to make that clear.
All right, so in interest of the wind, we're going to go ahead and conclude. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to come up. I want to thank the members of this community who are here with us as well for coming out. And, you know, thanks so much. And again, look, the best is yet to come. So thank you all for coming.